This video is on the objective graph, a limaçon. Uh, there's the accent aigu is missing under the C there. It's actually supposed to have a little fancy accent under the C in, in limaçon. Graph a limaçon uh, from a polar equation. All right. So this is another special kind of polar equation. We're going to see an equation of, equations of a certain form. And hopefully when you come across these equations with a certain form, you'll know, hey, you know, these graphs are going to take a certain shape. So if you want to see more about the topic, you know, click on more instruction. Look at their notes, their videos, their examples. You know, hopefully those help you. Uh, I'll actually show you some of those notes right now. So it's uh, investigating Limasson. See the see the little accent under the C. The word Limasson is Old French for snail, a name that describes the shape of this graph, yeah, like a snail shell, I guess. I don't know. Uh, a cardioid curve is a member of the Limasson family. Right, so you'll you'll talk about cardioids. You'll see cardioids in another objective in this assignment. And we can see the similarities in the graphs. Uh, the other images in this category include the one-loop Limasson and the two-loop or inner-loop Limasson, which I'll go over each. One-loop Limassons are sometimes referred to as dimpled Limasson. Uh, when the value of A over B is between 1 and 2. So greater than one, but you know less than two, they'll call it dimpled. Now, what are these a and b that they're talking about here? The equation of your general Limasson looks like this: r equals a plus or minus some b times the cosine of theta, just a single theta, not two theta or three theta or something like that. And you know you could also see sine. You know r equals a some number a plus or minus you know b sine theta. So if the ratio of a and b a to b is you know greater than one, but less than two, you're getting what's called a dimpled Limasson. It's basically like a circle that's pushed in on one side. All right. I'm seeing some examples here of dimpled Limassons. Uh, and if a over b is greater than or equal to, it's you know sometimes referred to as a convex Limasson, because uh, as a over b gets greater, as the ratio of a to b gets greater and greater, um, this Limasson shape gets closer and closer to just a circle. All right, so the the dimple gets smaller. And let me show you some examples. All right, so I'm going to go to Desmos here. This is that free online graphing calculator, Desmos.com. I'm going to put in R equals A. We'll just go plus B times, say, the cosine of theta. All right, and I'm going to add a slider here for A and for B. Now you see when A and B are the same, this is called a cardioid. Okay, this is called a cardioid because it looks kind of like a heart shape. Uh, we'll talk about, you know, you'll talk, you'll see cardioids in another objective in other videos, but it's simply this 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 equation where a and b are the same number or have the same absolute value. All right, so look at what happens if I just take. Remember, they said if a over b is greater than one. So what if I shrink B down? Now I'm going to change this here to, I'm going to just stick with positive values of B. Let's go 0 to 100 here. Go steps of 1. And same thing for the values of A. I'll just go 0 to 100 in steps of 1. All right, so I'll make a, I'll just start making A larger, all right? And what you're going to notice is when I make a larger, this uh, you know this dimple here, 
this pushed inside of the of the circle. It looks like a circle with a dimple, right? If I make a larger, that'll definitely make a over b bigger than one. And you see how it pushes that dimple out and becomes more circular. Right? The larger a gets, if b stays fixed and a gets larger, it becomes more and more circular. This isn't technically a circle. It's close. But now let me you know, get b, increase the value of b and you see the dimple coming back. Yeah, so I'll increase a. If I keep b fixed, oh, that's where a is less than b, sorry. But if I keep b fixed, let me zoom this out a bit more because it's going to get larger and larger. If I keep b fixed, you know, keep b the way it is and increase the value of a, the size of a, right, the, the, the shape becomes more and more circular. Let me make A pretty big. Now if I keep A fixed and increase the size of B, it becomes more dimpled. Right, you see now that dimple's pushing in. And then as soon as B gets larger than A, see now they're both 31, you see it's that cardioid shape again. When B is larger than A, this gets pushed in even further and kind of creates a, a loop inside the shape. You get a double loop. See, look at this. When B is larger than A, or when A divided by B is less than 1. Right? When A divided by B is bigger than 1, you have these you know, dimpled cardioids or dimple limassons. Uh, you know, again, like a circular shape with a, with a divot in it. So that's when a over b is greater than 1, looks something like this, and again the larger a is, then you know the larger that ratio gets, the larger a over b gets, the more circular the graph will look. And when a over b is less than 1, when a over b is less than 1, you know the dimple kind of gets pushed inside and you get this inner loop. Right? You get a, 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 a lima song with two loops or an inner loop. And again, I mean, the larger B gets, that loop inside will get more and more circular. Right? In fact, like, I know you don't see it here, but if I make B really big and A really small, it's basically becoming a circle again. Okay? Um, but yeah, so one more time. If A over B is less than 1, like you're seeing here, you get these lima songs with an inner loop. If A over B is bigger than one, you get these, you know, dimpled lima songs, you know, or a lima song with one loop, right? There's no inner loop. Right? And that's all they're saying here, right? So when A over B is bigger than one, lima songs with dimples, and then down here, when A over B is less than 1, you get these inner loop limassons. Right? Again, they look kind of like snail shells in the back of snails or something. I don't know. Whoever named these. Right? Great. So, so now let's look at our problem. So we have here a you know something of that form. Now they don't. They put the constant term second, all right? But I have uh, r equals r equals. You know, n it's negative seven times the cosine of theta uh, minus four, which, if you write it in that form earlier, is negative four minus seven times cosine theta. Right, and I really should have said like the magnitude of a over b. Right? You know, see, a here is negative four, the constant term. B here is you know negative seven or seven. The magnitude of a over b, like the absolute value of a over b, is four sevenths, right? Which is definitely less than one. Right? And if the magnitude of this, you know, if you take the constant term divided by the coefficient of the sine or the cosine, if that ratio the constant over the coefficient, if that magnitude, the absolute value, is less than 1, and you have this form, uh, you're going to get a limasson, right, a limasson with 
an inner loop. All right, and let's see this happening. All right. Let's see this happening. Now I'm going to try to graph it by hand. Now graph it, Now you may have seen in other videos I've done uh, related to polar graphs that you know graphing polar equations by hand eh, can be a bit tricky, especially if you don't have polar graph paper, which I don't here. I'm going to make my own, uh, draw my own polar grid. So one thing you may have noticed I like doing is I like graphing this the way I used to, right? the way we used to graph trigonometric functions. So imagine r is y. Right? I'm, not, I'm not changing these to rectangular. Right? This isn't the same as converting to rectangular. Just saying, you know, change r to y, so every time I see a y it's really r, and theta to x, and you know, negative 4 minus 7 times the cosine of x. And we'll look at the xy version of this same graph, and graph this the way I used to graph trigonometric functions. So x-axis, y-axis, again, every time I think of x it's the same as theta, every time I think of y it's the same as r. Right. Now this is a cosine function, you know, it's just cosine x, so the period is going to be 2 pi. I'll break this up into quarters, right, for the key values. And, you know, when I plug in this value, you know, cosine is 0, cosine is 0 is 1, times negative 7 plus negative 4 would be negative 11. All right, and negative 4 would be the midline. And the you know the amplitude would be seven, so positive three would be the highest value. And you know we'd be starting down here and going to negative four at pi over two. Then at pi it would be a value of three. Then at three pi over two back to the midline negative four, and then at two pi back to the lowest value of negative eleven. And I'm getting you know this curve here, this cosine wave. Right, and I'll also point out these points, you know, where where it crosses the x-axis, where the value of y or the value of r is zero. Okay, so let's uh, let's use this graph here as a guide to help us try and graph this polar equation on a polar grid. All right, so I'm going to pull up, make a polar grid. Polar grid, and then again the vertical axis, horizontal. This is the polar axis. Now I'm noticing here, you know, the lowest value r gets is negative 11, right? or the, you know, again the y coordinates here correspond to r, and the x coordinates correspond to theta. So the lowest y r gets is negative 11. So I'm going to do a I'm going to go out to a circle with a radius of 11 here. So this will be 5, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Right, there's r equals 11. And I see some with a radius of 4, so I'll mark off that. Radius of 3, mark that off. All right. And I'll, and I'll put these circles in. All right. I'll put some of these circles in. So you know, here's a circle with a radius of 1. Circle the radius of 2, fine. I'll put in the circle with a radius of 3. Circle with a radius of 4. And out here, circle with a radius of 11. This isn't going to be very great. I'm trying. I'm sorry. This isn't this isn't looking too hot. Okay. And you can imagine these other circles in there with all sorts of different radii and all that. All right. And then uh all right. So now looking at different parts of this graph. Now this graph, see I'm going from x equals 0 to 2 pi. So that's going from theta equals 0 to 2 pi. That's going once around the polar grid. I should get my entire graph. All right. Well, let's see. Uh, see this 0, negative 11 up here? Well, that means when theta is 0, 
Right, so theta equals zero is over here, right? This this part of the polar axis, theta equals zero. Uh, but you know, this is positive r's. This is saying when theta equals zero, r is negative eleven. So my graph starting over here, right? Negative eleven on the polar axis. So my graph is going to start over here. Now, this first part, you know, from this special point to say that special point, I'm between theta equals zero and pi over two. So theta equals zero. Here's theta equals pi over two up here, right? First quadrant. But again, the values of r are negative. So my graph won't be in the first quadrant, it's going to be in the opposite side, the fourth quadrant, so between here and here, or, or third quadrant, sorry, opposite side in the third quadrant. And, you know, from theta equals zero to theta equals pi over two, the curve is traveling from an r value of negative 11 to an r value of negative four. And again, just based on experience, so I'm moving from here to here, I'm, I'm, I'm going to land over here on this this point that's on the circle with a radius of four. Right? So again, instead of being between here and here, I'm between here and here. And, you know, R goes from, now it slowly decreases and then rap more rapidly decreases from 11 to four, something like that. And I'm, uh, and I end up here. Right. End up here on the radius of, you know, negative four. Right? All right, then this next piece, you know, from pi over two to something, and then to pi, uh, from pi over two to pi, uh, from pi over two to pi, at some point, at some point between theta equals pi over two, which is here, and theta equals pi, which is over here, the graph hits the origin, right? R is z the you know, here the y coordinate is zero, so that means the r value is zero. I'm, I'm at the pole. So, and again, between pi over two and pi, well, between pi over two and whatever I hit the pole at, I've got negative values of of r. Right? So I'm on the opposite side. So this is going to come in. And curl in its, and then at some point, hit the pole. Right, at some point hit the pole. And then after that, after it hits the pole, then we're back to being between pi over two and pi. We're back to positive bars, and going down to a, a radius of three. And I'm going to end up on this circle with a radius of three. So something curling in and, you know, ending up on this, you know, coming out, ending up on this circle with a radius of three, something like that. Right, again, this is very rough. All right, and then hopefully you can maybe see that the rest of it is just symmetrical. And you could test for symmetry and whatnot, but I'm not going to get into all that. Uh, you know, from pi to 3 pi over 2. See, at first I got positive r's, so I'm still in quadrant 3. And I'm going from a radius of 3 down to a radius of 0. So I'm going from here back to the origin down in quadrant 3 here. But then after that point... I have negative values of r, so instead of being in quadrant 3, I'm in quadrant 1 now, the opposite side, and going out until I hit a radius of negative 4, so I'm going back out, quadrant 1 now, and then curling back until I hit, you know, hit over here a radius of, uh, I'm on that circle with a radius of 4. And then the rest of the way, from 3 pi over 2 to 2 pi, right, I'm in quadrant 4 here. Well, the values of r are negative, so I need to be in quadrant 2, and go from a radius of 4 to a radius of 11. So starting here and have to end up there and it's going to be some curvy thing right? like, like that. All right, so very rough, very, very rough. Uh, and again, if you wanted to plot more points than just these, you know, be my guest. But do you see the lima zone with the inner loop? Right. And again, that's because the ratio of this constant term to this coefficient, it had a magnitude less than 1. If I did A over B and then looked at the magnitude, the absolute value, it was less than one, telling me that I have a lima zone with an inner loop. Now, you want to see a prettier picture? Let me go to the Desmos site again. Uh, let's get rid of this stuff. And I'll just type in the particular equation that we had. It was R equals 
Let me go back to the zoom into the home here. R equals it was negative four minus seven cosine theta. And look at that, right? That limousine with an inner loop. And it looks pretty similar to the picture I drew. It's a lot prettier, of course. Um, but that's what I had. Great, so back on the problem, all right, when we have to choose, let's see. Let's make sure the distance. Now that looks like it, but are the distances correct? No, because remember this inner loop. All right, let me bring my picture up. Remember this inner loop. The far end of the inner loop was on a circle of radius 3. Right. In this picture, the far end of the inner loop here is not on this circle of radius 3, so that's not the graph. It, it's mm, That's not the graph either. This is it. This far end of the inner loop is on a circle of radius 3, and you see the far end of the outer loop is on a circle of, uh, well, it looks like between 9 and 12, so radius 11, like in my picture. So this last one's the, the graph that I that I'm asked to produce. Wonderful. All right. So again, lots of stuff here. All right. Uh, hopefully, watching me go through this again, you know, graphing another polar curve, playing around with Desmos. Right. Uh, Desmos is a very powerful graphing calculator. Very quick and powerful tool. Help you see some relationships. Help you see some things. You know, with these polar curves. Very pretty. Uh, looking at the more instruction when necessary, um, looking at the answer explanations when they come up. Right? I'm hoping all this stuff helps you out when uh, you're going about doing this material on your own. And thank you very much for watching.